Okay, I'm gonna do, I put timer on because I'm not really good with time. Um, thank you very much for inviting me to this. This is such an important thing that we do as poets. Um, again, I'm hoping for the celebration next year. But then again, we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, I'm gonna read a, a couple of poems. Uh, I write a lot about homelessness and uh, I, I kind of think of it as uh, taking still ph photographs, taking uh, life photographs of people. And so this is, this is one. She is sitting on the sidewalk, collapsed into stucco, wall of a bike shop. She says hi when we pass. Sweet voice, red hair, a woman passed her before us, eyes concerned look back. The girl tilts her head up, smiles, scabs, freckles cover her face. She's new. The homeless tan hasn't darkened, toughened her skin. Red shirt bicycle patrol calling for help, calling the police. The girl lifts up off the sidewalk, straightens, gathers her stuff, walks on. She's maybe 16. Okay, in this, um, I started writing, uh, well, this is, this is, well, I'm write, trying to write social issues, but I'm kind of using mythology sort of to talk about it. And what I'm doing is, I don't know if you, read or seen Neil Gaiman's American Gods or read the book. I'm kind of bringing, trying to bring up the gods into this and how they are, are um, helping out or maybe not helping out. And this is called, uh, and this is about satyrs and it's, you know, Pan and all those guys, Togo, but they've kind of been around for a few millennia. They've kind of mellowed out. They're not, they're not as bad as they used to be and they're able to hide the goat legs. <laughs> So the satyrs at the mall. They park their car at the edge of the mall, approaches the temple. High holy days are here. Acolytes enter, the satyrs follow. These days, a few millennia later, the satyrs just fit in. Rarely see each other, but sometimes are called. Pan is with the elves, leaning against, waiting for Whitebeard. Torgo is meditating on the US flag, just above Whitebeard's throne, altar. Prayers of children are spoken. The elves and Pan chant their hosannas. Baby shark, dancing doll, walking Buzz Lightyear, mystery stuffed animals, Collectible surprise dolls, hand operated drone, cheaper than dirt, AR 15 rifles, gift cards, silk cashmere, crew neck sweater. The satyrs bear witness. All invocations are heard. This mystical and temporal dilemma, this children's consumer supplication, leaves the earth poisoned. The satyrs miss the forest, retire to a sports bar, remember trees. Okay, and, and here's a, another one, is, uh, uh, it's about Mothra. You guys know about Mothra? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, the, the, the reason Mothra and, and Godzilla and all those guys showed up is because, well, we were kind of, well, it's the hydrogen bombs, and you know, it's the Nagasaki uh, Hiroshima thing, and um, but Mothra came to protect us from the because we're messing up the earth. There, she showed up to hopefully stop us from doing that. And of course, Mothra is Japanese, so this is a high one. Oh. <laughs> it's supposed to be funny. <laughs> oh, and there's the and on Mothra's back, there's the uh, luminous twins who are uh, riding along with Mothra. And, um, and of course they became quite famous, as we all know from the movies. And this is called Mothra, the Twins and the Movies. 
The Luminous Twins loved the movies. Flickering lights and shadow, and they were loved. Fantasy violence disturbed Mothra, but the twins are stars. The press follows them, record contracts. While on the Godzilla set, Mothra reads Silent Spring. Rachel Carson's book is alarmist, the director says. We have time to fix this. We don't, Mothra replies. We have nothing. Silk water, no, still water, pesticide, better lives through chemistry, then we fade away. Thank you.